What is going on guys, it's your boy Pat. In today's video, we're gonna be covering how you can rank your website on Google Maps. So I'm gonna be covering some tips that you can do instantly that's going to help your rankings on Google Maps and organically, right? So the first tip that I have is you want to base your website around the different categories that you're going to be choosing for your Google My Business. Um, simply because we wanna make sure that the Google My Business is mirroring the website. So Google is already going to tell us what they want our content to be about. And that's primarily going to match the categories that we choose for our Google My Business. Um, and one of the tools that I like to use, um, if you don't have an idea of what categories or what category you should pick, um, you should use a tool called uh, Plepper.com. So if we go over to Plepper.com and then we go over to tools, click on that. And then we want to go to the Google My Business categories. And here we can actually search for a category that we, that we might want to go after, right? So for an example, if you were in HVAC or air conditioning, if we just type in air conditioning and I can't even spell, but let's go ahead and just choose um, air conditioning repair service. This is a common one that I saw. And then it's going to bring up the related categories. And it even gives you a nice pie chart here. So we can see that the top category related to the one that we just chose is HVAC contractor. Um, second most popular is air conditioning contractor and then heating contractor, right? So normally you want to pick the top three categories that are the most, uh, one, related to your business and two, your competitors are using. And I'll go into how you can actually find that in just a second here. So this is gonna be the step one is finding your top three categories. So go into plepper.com, do a search for a category that you might have in mind already or if you don't go ahead and search for one, and then it's going to give you the best, uh, you know, what are this, like 10 of them. So I would go ahead and choose the top three. Um, you know, in this case, we would do top three right here. And these are the categories that we wanna use, right? So once you have your categories down, make sure you write those down because you're going to want to include those whenever you're updating your actual Google My Business. Um, and then the next step that you want to do is you just want to do some competitor research. So what I would do is, you know, you want to go to the maps and let's do for this example, AC repair outlet. And then we're going to go over to the map section. And here, guys, this is where we want to pay attention to. You want to make sure you download a Chrome extension called GMB Crush. Um, let me just do a quick search for this. Um, GMB Crush, this is a awesome Google Chrome plugin that you can download and install. It's completely free. Um, and the creator of this is actually an awesome guy. He's always giving tips on uh, different local SEO groups on Facebook and different stuff like that. So he's very active in the community. He's a great guy, like I said. So I highly recommend this, this plugin, guys. It makes your life a lot easier whenever you're doing competitor analysis on Google Maps, right? So go ahead and do your search and then go into the map section. Once you have your GMB crush installed, what it's going to give you is it's gonna give you this nice category analysis here on the right hand side. And basically what this is, it's going to tell us what the competitors in your local area are using. And this is very important because whenever you're uh, optimizing your Google My Business listing, what's on Plepper might just be on a national level right? Just like a national average um, versus what GMB Crush is giving us. This is in your local area. So this is highly targeted for your area. And this is why it's so important to take this into consideration. Because if we see the top three here, it's HVAC contractor, air conditioning repair service, and then air conditioning contractor. So these are going to be our top three categories that we want to optimize our Google My Business and our website for. It even gives you the percentage of how many uh, of your competitors are using this. You can see 15, 13, 13, and then it just goes down from there. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't do you know more than three or four categories um, because you wanna keep your categories highly targeted. That would be 
The step two is to do competitor analysis using GMB Crush, and it actually gives you a lot more stuff. For an example, we can uh, go ahead and get results from this actual SERP. We go ahead and click OK, and then it's going to actually start crushing um, the competition, and it's going to give us more data that we can use. So if we go down here, it actually gives you this this nice chart here that we can see. All right, guys, so after you did some competitor analysis and you already have your top three categories, then you wanna make sure that we start optimizing our website for these categories or simply doing some on-page SEO. When it comes to on-page SEO, it's really all about content and having the right keywords. In this case, your keywords are pretty much going to be your categories but then you also want to have secondary keywords. And this is where using a tool like a uh, SEMrush can come into play to do some competitor research, finding your secondary keywords. Um, you know, you can go into, for an example, if we just do AC repair roulette, we can quickly find out um, some related keywords. So let's go down here. Um, you can see that the main keyword has a search volume of uh, 590. Um, and then if we go over to related keywords, these are secondary keywords that you can also include within your content. So if we click on view all keywords, all these are different keywords. And of course, some of these are going to be branded like Rowlet Air Inc., Five Star Aircon. Um, so make sure you do uh, check these keywords before you start including them on your website. So like Rowlet Texas Air Conditioning would be a good one. Heating Repair would be a good one air conditioning repair outlet. So these are other keywords that we can also optimize for uh, because you also want to make sure you're optimizing for long tail keywords because those are going to be a lot easier to rank in the short term. Um, so you don't want to leave those out as well. So using a tool like SEMrush is a great way to find other keywords to rank for. They have a free plan that you can get and then you can always upgrade if you want, but um, you can at least start off with your free plan um, there's other tools out there, so just find one that works best for you. Let's go back over into the actual website. So once you start optimizing the actual website, we want to make sure that we're including or optimizing the website for the categories that we chose. So if you guys remember, our top three categories were HVAC contractor, uh, air conditioning repair service, and then air conditioning contractor, if I'm not mistaken. So those three keywords or categories, we want to make sure that we're also putting those on our website, more importantly, on our homepage or whatever uh, page you have linking directly to your Google My Business. That's the page that you want to optimize um, for those specific categories. So if you can see here, we have our first category, HVAC contractor, right here in our header one tag. So most of you guys are already familiar with what a header one tag is. That's your H1. Um, it just helps Google understand what that particular page is about. And it said that it's a ranking signal. So make sure that your header one is your most important category um, going back to your Google My Business. And then we also have here in our H2, we have professional air conditioning repair service. Again, air conditioning repair service being another Google My Business category that we have on our actual Google My Business. Um, and then if we scroll down, we have air conditioning contractor. And then of course we included other keywords like residential and commercial because we do target those both, both of those services. So you just wanna make sure that you're including the category and then add whatever other keywords or just um, any kind of like call to actions or whatever the case you may be just to make it look a bit more appealing. You don't just want to make it look like you're writing for search engines. You also want to make it appealing, appealing for visitors, right? Um, and this is why I like to include things like, you know, 25 years experience, family owned and operated. Although these things really don't have anything to do with your rankings, I will tell you that it will affect conversions. You know, someone might choose to go with your company or call you just because they see that you're family owned and operated. Others, you know, might like that you have 25 years of experience. So having these small details can be helpful when we're talking about conversions. So when people talk about, no, you only have to include keywords, you know, who cares about your experience? Who cares about your past? You know, honestly, people do care about the company, the company's values, because it's all about 
having a brand at the end of the day, right? We can talk about optimizing for search engines all day long, but if your brand isn't on point and has a solid selling point, people are not going to contact you. And that's why a lot of these SEOs mixed up because they think, no, you only have to add keywords. Who cares about the history? Who cares about the experience, right? But at the end of the day, people do care about that because that is your brand and that's what makes your brand. So whenever you are including things like your mission, your values, all of those things can help increase your conversions. So, you know, find a way to include those within your website and also be able to optimize for search engines. Just some quick tips, at least what I like to do, you don't have to do it. Um, and then once you have your categories on your actual con within the content um, of course you also want to make sure you have good optimized content right um, so if i go in here and let's go ahead and highlight how much content we have on this home page let's go all the way down to here and word count so we have 1244 words so a lot of the websites that I audit really only have, you know, maybe 300 words, 500 would be pushing it. But a lot of the times they really only have like two to 300 words. And this is also going to vary, uh, you know, niche to niche, uh, area to area, because there's going to be areas that are more competitive. Um, but basically right now we are currently working on getting higher rankings. So we did go back in here and added a lot more content. So do make sure you have enough content and your content is going to revolve around your Google My Business categories, the services that you offer, and then also making sure that it's optimized for your local area. So this is why we add things like this. We have our services here linking to the service pages. Um, and then we have other little boxes here that are talking about, you know, other services that we provide. All these link out to their proper service page, right? Each of these has their own service page. And then again, we add more content here, increasing that topical relevancy. Uh, if we scroll down here, we're talking strictly about commercial AC. And then if you click learn more, it's going to take you to the commercial AC page. Um, same thing goes with residential, right? So we want to make sure that we're talking about our services um, and creating useful content. And then I like to include this FAQ section with uh, you know the frequently asked questions, I like to take questions um, from Google and obviously answer them. So how you would find these questions is if we go into Google and do AC repair. So we go into Google, right? We type in AC repair, scroll down and here, people also ask section, this is going to be key for your FAQ. You know, just click this and it's gonna keep giving you more and more questions that you can add, but of course, since Google is literally telling us these are frequently frequently asked questions, we also want to make sure we're including them on the website. So, you know, take a few of these and make sure you add them on the home page, or you can also add a FAQ page um, separately, right? But I always like to add a small section on the home page just to increase that relevancy, right? Um, and then of course you want to make sure you're embedding your reviews strict directly from Google. Um, I use, I believe it's called Trustpilot. Um, it's a free plugin that you can download on WordPress. The reason I like it is because it's the most easiest to use, at least from what I found. Um, a lot of the other plugins were a lot more complicated. And then talking on reviews, we also want to make sure that we're getting optimized and useful reviews. One of the best ways to find a good review is to look at other areas, other cities, look at the same type of businesses as yourself, just look in another city, right? So if we go here and let's just do AC Repair Houston, uh, cause I know Houston is a huge city. Um, and if we scroll down here, let's, for an example, let's click on this one. And then if we go and click on the reviews, you can see that Google actually splits up the reviews for these different keywords. So you can have company, you know, furnace. We can see it's highlighting these specific keywords, right? You can kind of check out the review here. All these Google is highlighting as the word company. Let's go back. Let's check out this one right here. And we click on reviews. 
Uh, let's check out these other keywords. So normally I'd want to find like reviews that are that Google picks up as like air conditioning, uh, AC repair. Let's see if any of these um, are getting picked up like that. So I don't see any here, but the point is, guys, you want to look at the top uh, businesses in, in big cities and check out the reviews that, are, that they are getting. And these first reviews here that Google is showing you, they usually pull these up as being the most relevant, you know, for their business, for their services. Um, so, you know, you can get this review, kind of rewrite it and, you know, maybe have like a friend, a family member post this for you, right? It's definitely going to help with your rankings. Just another way of increasing your local rankings, right? So this is a great way to give you a good idea of how to get a good review because Google is literally showing you what they think a good review is for your specific type of business. So there are some of the tips that I have for you guys. I hope you guys uh, took some away from this. Um, most importantly, take action on these things. Go ahead and start implementing them on your website. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not doing a lot of these things. So make sure you start implementing these, these things, guys. And, you know, let's all get higher rankings. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed this, guys. I'll see you guys in the next.